Hello, everybody. A very good evening. Welcome to the 10th episode of South Asian Digital Travel Conversation. Uh, this week, uh, our topic for discussion is events and entertainment, the forgotten industry. Sadly to say, uh, representing our panel for this evening, we have Amit Malhotra, co founder and director, Event Solution, Mumbai. Amit, ventured into the events industry over 10 years and with the idea and realization of events, event solution with his brother Kapil Malhotra. Event solution has made history last year by organizing the first dive show in India. They have also managed and organized multiple events for high value brands across India and the region. We have Adil Ismail of Think Advertising, co-founder and CEO. Adil, the creator of Visit Maldives, The Sunny Side of Life, started his event management and advertising agency, Think Advertising, over 14 years ago. The organization is one of the most known advertising agency in the Maldives, delivering services to top brands in the islands. We have Neelab Kapoor, creative director and founder, Studio Neelab. Neelab Kapoor is known as a serial startup entrepreneur active angel investor and an artist at heart. Design, sorry, uh, design and art, he owns and operates successful businesses in the UAE and India. Over two decades of experience in event industry, he has created a global brand, Studio Neelab, one of India's most awarded and internationally acclaimed design and wedding company. Last but not least, uh, we have Nalina Wanasinghe, Chief Impressionist, Impress Event Sri Lanka. Nalina is the Chief Impressionist and founder of Impress Events Private Limited. Nalina has been involved in conceptualizing and producing theme events over the past 10 years. She's constantly putting, pushing the limits of audience engagement at events through experiential interactions. So there you have it, uh, ladies and gentlemen, our wonderful panel for the evening. Uh, over to you, Shani. And we can have the show started. Thank you, Suraj, and welcome, everyone. I hope everyone's ready for the questions. I will start with you, Amit. We're talking about events and entertainment, and as Suraj mentioned, it's a forgotten industry. But India can be described as the mecca of events and thousands of events happen every year, and not to mention there's a grand wedding. How has COVID-19 impacted the industry, and are people ready for huge events and grand weddings? Uh, well, see, the pandemic has actually, uh, you know, globally uh, hit the economy, you know, in a, in a huge manner. Uh, not only India, obviously. Uh, there are very few industries that are hit as much as uh, the event industry has been hit, uh, you know, in, in these times. Uh, I, only thing I could think of could be the tourism industry as well, along with with the events. Uh, with small and large events that are that are you know really hit uh, or or being cancelled uh, during during these times, uh, uh, you know the, the it's it's really uh, uh, you know affected in in a in a in a chain uh, chain manner, where uh, you know uh, it it is it is uh, gone on to affect multiple uh, aspects of of the industry or or the sector it could be uh, you know right from the venues to the vendors event planners artists uh, you know right up to the carpenter who's who's doing up the stage for for you uh, it, it, not only that you know it it also has uh, affected a lot of countless other sectors uh, you know which which could uh, which could be uh, you know affected but due to the, the which are which are which rely on the events uh, industry rather, you know. Yeah. Um, coming to the other part, uh, the other half of your question, rather, are we are we ready uh, for uh, big scale events, uh, large scale events? Um, uh, you know, even though we are ready or or we would feel we are ready, I would I would still think we're we're some time from from uh, you know going uh, for large scale or big scale events. Um, authorities in India have have allowed uh, events to happen now. Um, events have started to unfold in in certain cities, uh, but to to a smaller scale, uh, lesser gathering 
could be of around uh, the maximum number of people that you can actually gather in one place at one time would be 50, uh, 50 packs. Uh, so limited attendance is, is that we can look at. Uh, it's a strict no-no for me, uh, if you say for a big scale event, but yeah, uh, small scale events can actually, uh, you know, uh, occur. And uh, it's, it's more controlled also. Uh, it's, it'd be in a controlled aspect that we can actually work on. You know, all my other panelists also would agree to the fact that, you know, we are ready in a way to go ahead and, and you know, uh, uh, conduct an event or organize an event uh, of a large scale. We're reaching to get out there, but uh, the risk that it, ha it holds, the pandemic holds, uh, is big and the pandemic is not yet over. So, yeah. Thank you, Amir. Now, Adil, you recently published findings on the impact of COVID-19 on the event industry in the Maldives. What's the biggest worry you have noticed and need to be answered at the earliest? Mr. Adil? Uh, we all know, like Amit said, uh, the industry is very prone to turmoil. Be, be it any change, we are very sensitive. Uh, if you see any political instability or a natural disaster, everything has impacted our industry, maybe the first in line to, for disruption to take, when, when disruption takes place. Yeah, But I mean, all other previous cases we have been, uh, we could actually estimate the time to bounce back or we have precedents to look back and we know we can calculate the amount of time we will need to return back to business. But COVID-19 has been very different. There has been a lot of uncertainty. I mean, people don't know. There has been a lot of uh, speculation over different scenarios. Yeah, when when tourism will pick up, when would the corporate events be, uh, will come back? When can weddings happen? Uh, we don't know the safe period. I mean, nobody knew. So the world at large has, I mean, seen this uncertainty. So uh, of course, uh, the event industry here has, hit back there is like a lot of very expensive in investments lying idle with with no hope or when it, when it can come back. So we thought that it's the right time actually to check, uh, to gauge the level of impact on the industry. So we carried out this survey uh, in, uh, in May and then there are very interesting findings here. But this survey was done with the corporate companies and uh, in, in a corporate market, not, not, not on the resort industry. So uh, as a caution there. So 87% of the companies stated that they have uh, faced an immediate negative impact because of COVID. And out of that, 52% businesses said that they would be cutting their advertising and marketing budgets for the year. So 52%, and out of this 52%, 40% or more claims that the budget would be cut by half. So we can imagine the impact it would cause on, on the event. So events is something which would take, I mean, a, a longer time to catch up. Also, there are measures by the government. We don't know when there, there could be gatherings like Amit said. So, and then out of it, uh, only 6% of the companies have stated that they would be continuing their marketing campaigns as planned. And then 41% uh, of companies stated that they've already uh, decided to cancel the plans for the events. So, I mean, you can imagine the impact it has already caused. And then if you look at the first measures by the government uh, and the state owned enterprises for the cost cut down measures, the first was to cancel all events, all anniversaries, corporate events. So it was the first in line. So, I mean, probably we are the industry which one of the industries probably which would have felt the felt the i mean the blow first so i think the biggest worry the biggest question for now is that even for for, for the companies that when we can return to business when can we we start uh, having events as before i mean so i, I think that would be the biggest concern John. okay thank you adil now, Mr. Neelab, you have done amazing events and celebrity, celebrity weddings, not only in India, but across the globe. How are people coping with the new normal? And when do you think people and organizations would want big events to happen? Neelab. Neelab, you're on mute.
Hi guys, how are you guys? Um, so I think it's good to be on the panel to have both sides and also have a perspective on the information. Uh, I would like to only point out that we we all know globally what the situation is. is. So there is there is uh, enough of information to us and knowledge that what is happening in this world, and we don't have a cure for this uh, virus. And we all need to survive while there is a threat. And we all know that there are certain limitations which we have to follow uh, while keeping the ball rolling. When I say then we cannot stop doing what we have to do, we have to find ways to do it and recalibrate our uh, efforts to plan and strategize things, keeping in mind how the um, you know, situation has to be dealt with. So coming to straight away that, you know, weddings definitely in comparison to large events, corporate events, uh, will start happening. And in fact, they already started happening now uh, within India and across. Uh, I would probably put in a perspective of Middle East uh, because I operate from Dubai and I look into these two regions specifically, uh, India and Middle East. And I feel that the, the regulations which have been set by and the parameters which are set by government of uh, UAE and as well as uh, India have asked all of us to take precautions and take enough of, uh, you, know, um, you know, SOPs under consideration while hosting these uh, events. So uh, I think the, the, the movement has already started. Uh, there is destination wedding which took place in Mumbai yesterday, which was uh, done successfully. There's, uh, I've heard on the social media, there was a wedding which took place three days back in a, a, remote, a place in a destination within India in the up hills of uh, Northern Belt. Uh, uh, there, was, there is a lot of business already which is uh, taking, place, taking place in India, in New Delhi. Um, so I feel that when you look at Bangalore or Kerala, those and especially Goa, there are certain areas which have uh, been uh, less affected or they have taken, you know, uh, measures to effectively control the community uh, spread. They are all going out and starting the operations. Whereas in India, in Mumbai, sorry, um, there are uh, you know properties, hotels which have not yet op started operations. Uh, and um, it will get started now in full go, but we all need to take precautions and, and work towards it. This, the mode of strategy which I see is, is going to be uh, for a high-end wedding, which probably a client was spending uh, on a premium side before COVID. This time, in, within the COVID period, they will still want to do the same experiences and create the same larger-than-life experience, but for a limited number of guests but it will be more carefully curated uh, that rather taking a full flight or a normal ticketed the airline, they would probably prefer to go in for a chartered flight. The functions probably if, if they are, uh, have a guest list of 150 or 200, the event will be then divided into three days over spreading the wedding in two to three days where the guest list can be spread out. Smaller destinations like Maldives, Mauritius, um, Middle East, Europe, uh, there are certain places in Greece, for example, we'll see local movement happening and cross, like Turkey has already announced the, um, you know, the tourism starting to welcome. Uh, Dubai has uh, sent, has already officially announced from 7th July, that they're, they're looking at welcoming the tourists in. So I feel that um, if we design our events in a, in, in a very specific format where uh, we follow high standards of SOPs and we maintain, I think, uh, destinations, smaller destinations like Maldives, uh, you know, and, um, you know, some places like Greece, uh, international destinations will also start happening very soon, including Turkey. Um, within India, uh, local weddings will see a larger chunk of business happening in coming time. But uh, we... we it's, it's, it's very important for us to keep the ball rolling because if you stop, the, uh, stop thinking only that it's not possible, then the economy will come to a complete halt. So 
we have to find and we'll be very careful in start planning and executing these events and we have to support the government in coming out and educating the customer and the client and the entire ecosystem that there are certain uh, um, you know rules and regulations and procedures which we all need to abide to and if we follow that i think in soon I, I nobody has an answer when the vaccine is going to arrive and when we're going to probably find a solution to this but there are so many other diseases and viruses which are already existing in our bodies that have been living through this. This is not the first time the pandemic has happened in our, in our, in our lifetime. So we have seen worse times, but we've all sailed through. Right now, the idea is to come together and educate and help each other to create a better framework under which we can start doing these um, you know, weddings, which probably will be under 50. But the largest event is not the need of the hour because everything which is happening is happening on digital and digital is going to be the main um, area of expansion of business and interest to a lot of large corporates and brands and including some virtual attendees who are going to be participating on um, you know um, social events so yes so we, it's on a positive note um, i think i see a lot of positivity coming in in uh, after the lockdown and and things going on an upside thank you <clears throat> thank you neelab and now, Nalina, Sri Lanka has done a great job in controlling the COVID-19 pandemic. And with the huge market for corporate and weddings, how is the catch-up doing in Sri Lanka? And are there any specific measures that needs to be addressed even after it's been controlled? Hi, yes, good evening, everyone. Uh, as you very correctly said, Sri Lanka is uh, one of the best countries that uh, control the COVID-19 pandemic situation uh, very well. So I take this opportunity to thank each and every officials who did a fantastic job, starting from the president, all the healthcare workers, tri forces, uh, intelligence services, police, and everyone did a fantastic job to control this pandemic situation. So moving forward uh, in Sri Lanka, with regarding the events, uh, it's sort of in domestic level. We have started online event uh, recently as. Uh, the previous speaker said it was like more into virtual but moving forward step by step now it's becoming sort of hybrid events so where you can get limited number of people to the event while you're going with online uh, weddings if i talk about weddings in domestic levels uh, sri lanka has started some domestic uh, weddings but with uh, limited uh, number of attendees and also adhering to the rules and regulations. So even it's controlled, government is taking all measurement to take control of a second wave, which is uh, why the strict guidelines in place. I think which is a good, play, a good, good thing because we need to adhere some of the rules and regulations and we need to have uh, guidelines. So that is there when it comes to wedding in Sri Lanka from the hotel, and to the guest, social distancing, limitation of guest hygiene, and everything is uh, undergoing. So uh, all in all, I'm very op optimistic about Sri Lankan event scope. Thank you, Nalina. Now my next question is for Amit. Again, as Neelab just mentioned, everything is happening digitally now, and organizations are moving towards the digital platform in marketing and promotion as well. As well. And we have seen the Arabian travel market happening digitally as well. So is this going to be a game changer? Is the COVID-19 pandemic going to be a game changer? See, uh, everyone's moving to the digital space. Obviously, uh, it's the need of the hour. Uh, you know, adversity is, is the mother of uh, innovation. Uh, obviously, uh, a lot of, lot of events are moving to the digital space. A lot of companies are uh, moving on to the to the, uh, you know, uh, to create digital IPs, uh, if, if I may say so. Also, a good number of people or, or companies are actually moving on to alliances or, or searching on alliances who they can actually uh, capture or, or you know, uh, work with uh, on, on a digital space altogether. But, but again, uh, as per, as per uh, you know, expert comments or experts uh, of the industry who have, who have watched, uh, you know, commented in the past or, or during the time of the pandemic as well you know we should we should realize that uh, you know the dynamic of of events uh, or the sphere of events will will not always uh, depend on you know on uh, on a digital orientation it's it's more on the more more 
to be uh, you know looking at the the real aspect or or you know the live aspect of the events several uh, experts when they suggested that uh, you know this will be a phase wise uh, a transition uh, that we would actually move on to phase 1 which we are we were already into uh, some time back and uh, you know uh, people were boasting about the virtual uh, space coming coming to the next phase obviously the next the second phase would be the next uh, you know 3 to 6 months where uh, a combination as narina uh, mentioned some time back about the hybrid uh, you know uh, model uh, you know people would want to comply with uh, or or you know uh, work with the whole real and and live event space along with you know uh, the virtual space uh, involving both and uh, uh, the last phase obviously the third phase that would we would all be excited and and be waiting on uh, for would be the live uh, uh, you know uh, event space when we go you know really big with with live uh, uh, events actually happening uh, that's that's something that we can actually look at but i'm i'm really sure that uh, you know virtual is is uh, here and I'm, i'm not saying it's not here to stay for uh, it's it's created a, a huge uh, you know uh, it it helped uh, you know uh, fill in the gap or the void where uh, events were uh, not happening for a long time and then we we went on uh, to the support of of virtual events uh, yeah we would bounce back uh, you know stronger as as a unit as it as a as an industry However, aspects of uh, you know health, uh, safety uh, is is something that should be of utmost priority. Uh, uh, I would also suggest that uh, you know now that people are uh, look so so uh, in a time when we would have uh, production managers or higher production managers for our event companies, uh, people are moving on to hiring uh, you know uh, managers for the virtual space as well. Uh, you know, uh, personnel for the virtual uh, uh, event aspect. uh the the other aspect or uh, to be really looked at would be you know a health or a or a hygiene expert also uh, to be a part of the real uh, life events thank you yeah. and now neil for you speaking of digital events we have there have been um, few virtual weddings and we have seen agms happening digitally as well as digital music shows all which are very far from human touch so what's your say on the topic Nilab Nilab you're on mute Hi I'm I'm a firm believer now that virtual is going to be a part of our daily uh you know uh, practice of business uh virtual was always there from last 25 years 30 years in fact more uh like how zoom existed from last so many years but we were not familiar with it Uh, how whatsapp replaced messages how nokia was replaced by apple phones and how uh people have migrated from uh you know from from um, you know normal electric uh non electric cars to electric vehicles now uh, everything is is this is the new age and i feel that if there were small shops on the road then came the malls the trends of malls and people still go to the shops and they still go to the malls so it's all about how you look at it if we are entering the world of digital space now and because we've got familiar with it we've got used to zoom now it will help me to optimize my time more effectively i can travel uh, digitally virtually uh, in four different states four different countries four different time zones without even uh, taking a flight across so i think that my productivity and across the globe people will also uh, have realized that the productivity over has gone to three axes because your time investment on other things have gone reduced so now you can actually focus on developing few skill sets which is for example working harder on the virtual aspects so understanding more of social media and digital world integration to your brand building working harder to understand what ar vr is all about now there is this is a world of xr which is extended reality which is going to take and change the way you and me will actually will start um, you know functioning uh, i'm waiting for the day when uh, facebook is going to launch facebook horizon and you and me will actually will meet 
uh, in Horizon in, in a virtual world which has been created, which is a, one of the biggest platforms, virtual platform designed by Facebook. It is going to be a bigger, bigger, larger platform than any business or e-meeting or kind of a socializing without even going and doing anything like a Zoom also. So it will replace everything. Um, they have already, so I feel that, you know, this, this, so the subject of AR, VR is something which is very interesting to me. And, and soon as a company, as a, as a holding company, we are launching two tech platforms, which are going to be focusing on uh, very interesting phases, which we, we think that could be beneficial for third party and the global audience and, and, the, and the entire, uh, you know, fraternity on B2B and B2C. And I've, I firmly feel that whether it is the music industry or health sector, whether it is the education sector, whether it is events, weddings, virtual is here for good now. So it's not going anyway. I'm not going to stop using Zoom and I will not stop doing virtual events. The, even if uh, I, I, I'm, I'm, um, I, know I, I, I get uh, the vaccination in my body. So I'm here to actually remove all the geographic limitations. Now, if I am hosting a, a, a large event, I am not hosting on a piece of land and only inviting 5,000, 3,000 people. I am looking at a global audience. I'm looking at a larger reach. So even if I have a hybrid model, which is basically offline and online, both are going to be beneficial to me. So yes, I feel that the world is changing and uh, digital has been welcomed by me uh, personally and a lot of people in, in a very positive side. In fact, I feel that COVID is a good time for us and it's a blessing in disguise that we were working so hard on doing some so much nonsense stuff which we were trying to do. This time has actually given us that holiday to actually homework time which we need to do and step back and realize where our energy should be focused. And today I think a lot of people have realized that they have, um, they have focused more on building up a better strategy and when this op market opens up in, in terms of little more freedom of, of socializing. I think we will see a lot of new thought processes coming in, the new generation taking a different way of approaching things. And, and I think I'm very positive that this is going to completely change the way 2020 is going to be the game changer year for all of us. Thank you, Nilab. That was a very interesting answer, especially the um, examples you used in the beginning. Adil, my next question is for you. The event industry in the Maldives is very dependent on tourism. So what are your suggestions on finding alternatives and reduce this dependency? Adil, you're on mute. Yeah, can you hear me now? Yeah, uh, you are correct that the two, the event industry in the Maldives is very, very much dependent on tourism. And then I think that's our core of the industry is, yeah. And then uh, the investments are also matched for, to cater for the industry events, be it the big parties, celebrity events, and the big weddings. So we are very much a tourism-based event industry. If you look at it, uh, probably 60% of the industry or, or the revenue that comes from the industry is from, from the tour, tourism sector. So, uh, and then uh, when the COVID-19 hit China, we were affected as early as in January because China being our biggest market, uh, the, the parties, the weddings and the events from uh, the market uh, stopped altogether and then we felt that change as early as January, February. So, so we are very, very right to say that the, the dependency is there very much. But coming back to the question, is there an alternative to, to reduce dependency? I think the, the question is, uh, do, we, do we really need an alternative? Probably, uh, I think uh, we, we don't need an alternative. I mean, if the, the, the tourism industry is our biggest opportunity. I mean, uh, if you look at, uh, there is a ready market where people are waiting for bigger parties, uh, bigger events, there's mice tourism happening. So with the, with the number of bigger brands coming in and then 
the demand for the festive season, especially, we are looking at uh, big brands uh, looking for events uh, close to probably $200,000 per event for, for just one night. So, and then there is, even if you look at the tra travelers market, there are people looking for very big events, such as weddings, which are happening. I'm sure Amit and Neela will agree on we, for, for the demand we have on this. So very correct, uh, the industry has suffered much, but now we know that the tourism and the border will open on, on 15th July. And then we are, we are very, very positive that uh, the events will bounce back. So probably it, it might not happen immediately, but uh, if you look at any other typical year, by this time you have the, the festive events or the new year events confirmed now. But from, from the parties I work with, we know that the bigger brands are already closing our contracts with the event companies. So if you look at the Maldives scenario, we have over 150 operational resorts. And then a lot of resorts are very, very high end resorts. And then uh, we have uh, 20, 20 odd companies who are, who are in uh, the event industry. And probably uh, if you look at the big companies, uh, less than 10. So each of these companies would be taking about probably five to 10 contracts during the festive season which would be, I mean, the core of their season. So, I mean, when, when you see it like this, uh, we, we should not be looking at alternatives rather than uh, this is the opportunity. This is where our, our biggest advantage is. And then if you look at how Maldives tourism is based, uh, a lot of people, even uh, we heard last week that Germany has classified Maldives as a safe destination because we are one island, one resort model. So the, the, the safe aspect for, uh, for tourism uh, to take place is here. We, you don't need to mingle with the public or the populations to, be, to travel to Maldives. You come to the airport or you, you, you land in a, a private uh, I mean, jet in a domestic airport and then you travel to your destination. And then there is a safe tourism model where you have to do a PCR test in, in some of the resorts and then you you stay in your villa just for a couple of hours, probably six to eight hours and after that you get to mingle with the rest of. So that, that model is already there. So like I said, already uh, a lot of big brands are talking with the event companies. Some of them have already closed the deals. So uh, there, there is opportunity, so I, I would not say that we should reduce dependency on 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 the on the tourism industry. Rather, we should still have, I mean, take mileage or take the advantage of what's there. The big market is out there, yeah. Thank you, thank you, Adil. And Alina Sri Lanka is um, set to open in August, but even at the domestic level, when do you think mice events would be possible? Well, uh, that is a tough question to answer, to be honest. Uh, as you said, uh, Sri Lanka is opening on August for tourists uh, with a lot of precautions. Uh, uh, everything is set uh, from the authorities. Uh, you need to get a PCR test done within 72 hours before you arrive to Sri Lanka. And then once you come here, uh, everything is set to get a, another PCR test. So all the safety measurements are being taken from the authorities. But even though uh, it is open for tourists, uh, Hosting MICE events is different from the normal tourists coming into the country. Uh, however, I believe it's about scaling the current domestic event structure to accommodate uh, MICE events. Uh, as a country, Sri Lanka is restarting uh, from with everyone's support. So it's, we have a project going on, Restart Sri Lanka. With that, I'm sure I'm looking positively we can scale this thing. Uh, though I can't uh, tell the exact date, probably end of this year or maybe uh, 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 next year at the beginning, because this thing is moving fast within the country. So everyone has a hope, everyone is waiting for that. Uh, let's say end of this year or probably uh, next year at the beginning, we should be able to see good news. Malina, thank you. My next question is for you again. There has been a, a lot of discussion going on about revival and transformation in creating a resilient tourism industry. Has the voice of the event industry been heard? 
and has the concerns been responded? Nalina. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, yeah. as, as of now, a lot of discussions have, have been, uh, happened and a lot of uh, parties were involved in this. Uh, at the end of the day, event is not just event planner. So this is a lot of uh, supporters, a lot of supply chain and a lot of people involved in this uh, sort of a situation. Uh, so what would I like to see is the entire value scheme concern address and definitely that process is undergoing. So as I said, it's been uh, responded, but there are things that uh, we need to get together and find solutions as a as a whole team. Thank you, Nalina. Amit, my next question is to you. The mice and wedding industry in India is worth over 13 billion US dollars, but right now we can say that the industry is bleeding. So how do you see the future of events and entertainment in India? Well, it's bleeding and more for sure, uh, you know, but uh, every crisis has, uh, I don't know, two sides to it, probably a challenge and an opportunity. Uh, it's the way you look at it and the, the way you take it. Uh, as such, it's not just a, a matter of getting, uh, you know, the event industry started uh, right now, uh, or restarted rather. Uh, the collective event uh, ecosystem has to understand uh, what has changed during the pre-COVID and, and the post-COVID times. And uh, what will be the best position of, uh, for the industry uh, to grow together, you know, um, and become a global force, uh, which it was and, and, you know, become once again. Uh, coming coming to the other part of, of your question is, uh, I don't know, probably, uh, you know, destination weddings, uh, as Nilab mentioned, are already in, in uh, action. Uh, mice could also be looked at at another aspect of, of starting off. Uh, because it's, it's more of a controlled uh, ma manner of, of organizing uh, a mice or, or, or a destination wedding because, because the number of attendees are a lot more uh, lesser compared to a large scale or a public gathering uh, or a public event. And we're not talking about a social gathering uh, event here uh, because uh, that's, that's way beyond our control even though we say we would be but it's, it's something that we can't look at at this moment at this point in time. Uh, uh, you know, a, a, a niche, a niche kind of an event, limited attendees is something that we can actually look at. Uh, health and safety measures can be, uh, you know, controlled, uh, well controlled. Hygiene is something that we can look at, and uh, you know, necessary precautions and safety measures can be can be taken care of all throughout. Uh, as Nilab mentioned earlier, chartered flights can be arranged. Uh, you know, these are all controlled mannerisms that we can actually conduct events. Uh, we have done events in the past in the Maldives, a buyout of an island in 20, 2017, along with a, with a partner of ours, uh, Creative Travel. So uh, that was that was something that we can actually, you know, uh, uh, you know, actually execute on those lines. Uh, those those kind of events can can happen. A uh, lot of control goes into that, and uh, yeah, that, that's something we can actually look at. Adaptability is, is the key here, so yeah. Thank you. Now Adil, as you mentioned earlier, it's not only events which have been halted, the advertising and prom promotion market has also been affected. And they seem to be, have diverted more into social media. Professionals in the industry has given their opinion that this is something which cannot be turned back. What's your say in this? Yeah, very, very true. Uh, I think uh, we have, I mean, most businesses have been challenged to its core during this time, but it has also paved a lot of opportunities to build up digital capabilities, I mean, within themselves. Uh, within the two months of lockdown in the Maldives, we saw uh, even corner shops doing uh, Viber deliveries, uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, businesses going to e-commerce. So although the challenge was there, uh, the, the situation made, uh, e-commerce or digital not not a nice add-on but rather a necessity so we 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 have actually uh, seen i think even if you look at uh, in the world perspective also probably the covid uh, period has done more transition to digital age probably the last 15 or 20 years so it was uh, probably a forced transition but this but okay coming back to the question are we going to go back uh, we have all experienced the efficiency of doing work. I mean, staying at home, 
flexible working hours and then also ordering something online and bring it bring it home all this we know are very convenient and possible so why would we want to go back uh, i mean if, even if you look at uh, the telecom or the utility sector and the banking even so i mean previously there were a lot of services which we had to go and queue or take a token now can be done online we, we can stay home and do it uh, so all these have facilitated a transition which is very, very convenient and uh, also cost effective. So I don't see that us taking a step back on this, but again, the question would be, is the infrastructure ready for such a service? So we would need, because we are at a, at a situation where our lives are 100% or probably more dependent on, on, on the internet. So unless we have that, uh, reliability, efficiency, and customer service all tackled up to to cater for this demand. I, and also, uh, I was also talking about Amit before, the question of uh, cyber security as well. I mean, when we all go, even in the case of events or e-commerce or, or anything, the question of uh, people taking advantage, of, I mean, the, the criminals uh, taking uh, the platform over. So all these needs come into place. So, I think uh, we are all very ready and then we are not going to go back. Uh, we can now have meetings on Zoom. We don't need to travel, uh, especially, okay, in, in the Maldives case, it might be 15, 20 minutes to go somewhere, but even in, in, in the regional countries like India, probably uh, you, you'll take, travel takes probably days yeah, for you for you to, uh, to go and meet a client and come back. So all this, we have, we have, I think the transition has happened. So. Uh, with the support infrastructure in place and then with the right security measures uh, we, we are here to say and then uh, even in the in the survey we have done we, we have seen that a lot of people uh, businesses have uh, they have I mean, gained faith in social media so it's compared to the traditional traditional mediums we have been using it's uh, more more cost effective and then with with a uh, I mean, in the Maldives, the, the smartphone penetration is very high. So uh, almost everybody has a smartphone. So reaching uh, to your customers and then segmenting your market has be, been never easier. So very correct. We are not, not going to go back on that. Thank you, Adil. Now, Neelab, times of crisis have histor historically been um, opportunities for change. Or as humans, we learn from each experience that we go through. Are you optimistic that as we emerge from this COVID-19 pandemic, that it could be a chance to create a better service and form new ideas? Yeah, I'm a firm believer that uh, this time has been a time to reboot, realign, restructure ourselves and recaliber our thought processes. I completely believe that uh, looking into the statistics, like for example, giving you a few examples and I'll come to the uh, you know, ideas and new concepts. Uh, U.S. one third of the entire economy, entire gen, uh, entire population has, in this last four months of uh, COVID period, has gone online and uh, done one transaction uh, online, which the U.S. as as a as the most um, you know uh, flourishing economy in the globe in the world has uh, has shown that transition. So once one person has done a transaction like that. He's not going to go back. So there has been a transition. There, if you look at the statistics of, of banking, it takes almost around nine clicks, nine, um, you know, the, the, the whole interaction between a customer and nine individuals within the banking, offline banking sector, um, uh, which, which makes you open a bank account or service one inquiry which you have. The transition has happened now online and on a one click, you are you are, you can do a transaction on your banking, um, online education. Online education. If you look at this whole way the things have gone, it it, it is going to be uh, is going to go into the next level of expansion of business. Almost hundred universities within India have been sanctioned by the government of India to go online. 
including IMs, MICA, and other uh, you know SP Gen. So you are looking at uh, a huge uh, exposure and transition of offline schooling and offline education going into online. Um, UAE, Dubai, or Middle East has never been practicing e-commerce. In 2020 November, uh, Dubai is setting up the largest, largest, I mean, say one of the best infrastructure um, for e-commerce com companies, which is called Commerce City, where you can probably establish your global business under Middle East and UAE uh, and operate under the in, uh, under the domain. Uh, and if you if you come as a license holder, um, Middle East has seen a huge growth in in startups, in aggregation platforms, whether it's FMB sector, whether home delivery or, or CNF, uh, clearing and forwarding perspective. Uh, India, uh, coming to India, I think uh, the whole idea of, of large, uh, largely has, has uh, seen a growth in, 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 in pharmaceuticals, in healthcare sector, in e-learning, uh, e education, um, majorly, uh, FMGC products, uh, which is now Make in India, uh, where our uh, Honorable Prime Minister, Mr. Modi, emphasizes that local is the new global. The idea is now to make stuff which is produced and manufactured within India. There are almost 1,000 uh, uh, factories and un units which are looking for land in India, in Orissa, in, in outskirts of Gujarat and in UP belt. And a government has set up a one sin, single window clearance where um, these companies can come and opt for large land banks. And they're looking for establishing new plants in, within India. There's a huge amount of uh, Make in India, which is going to be seen today and, and from here on onwards replacement of Chinese products, whether it is the um, platforms, uh, e-commerce platforms. Uh, look at the way um, uh, Reliance has put together the GeoMart. Last so many years, we've been seeing all, um, you, know, you know, cellular companies and, and GSM companies doing uh, businesses uh, only in one direction. And Geo came with an idea of expansion from their oil sector and expanded it Self entirely on the online space, which has recently launched, which is the GeoMart. GeoMart, they have been uh, aggregating almost the entire national wide, uh, um, you know, farmers where today you can buy vegetables and fruits at any price point, at, at one price point across India on one platform. More than one lakh doctors are easily available through GeoMart, which they're putting together now, announced on the second day, that you can, with a 50 rupees of consultancy, you can, you can actually consult a doctor online. So there has been a huge amount of transition and new ideas which have come up. Now, I, if, if I would say that what as an individual or as a company, as a brand studio, Nilab, um, has, has uh, practiced and put together a plan for future, and we're coming up with new ideas in Middle East, in, your, in, in, in Dubai, and, and in India, is that we're announcing two biggest IPs uh, in collaboration with one giant company in India. And we're going to be uh, taking the entire level of experience of, of uh, the whole idea of the whole interaction between um, B2B and B2C to the next level. Uh, Along with that, there are two tech platforms uh, being in the business of technology from the last seven, eight years now. I work a lot with on the technology side. So working with a blockchain model, which has enabled us to put together a platform, which is a API, our own API constructed AI based model, uh, RPA model, basically. We have constructed a, 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 in collaboration with the technology company, we'll be announcing very soon two big platforms, which are going to be uh, leveraging the next uh, uh, thought process of how, as an individual, I evolved in this time period. So I, that's what I've done is I have, I, I, I have kind of uh, believed that, um, you know, to learn new things, you have to unlearn and detach from what you have been learning and, and doing all these while. So unlearn to learn 
is what uh, has been the thought process over last uh, uh, four months, three months of lockdown, and which has made me, uh, you know, try and expand my vision, considering that all the experiences and the knowledge and the thought process I used to have before COVID, now the idea is to work on our wisdom, the wisdom which is going to take us to the next level, which is going to help us survive, be afloat, and make us pass through this entire uh, you know, phase of life, which actually is a good challenging time for us. If we are able to pass through this challenging time, there is no way that nobody can guarantee that there's not going to be another COVID coming in the next two years or five years down the line. So we have to be prepared now. We have to be very much um, ready with a plan B. And if you're going digital, if you're going with hybrid level, if you're going with the plan, um, you know, trying to put all our eggs in the same basket will not work. We have to find revenue streams, which probably will keep us going because human interaction is going to change now. It's not going to remain the same. It, it, whether it is your friends, whether it is your family, whether it is your society. So it, I always feel that there is core and more. So if you have a core business, you align yourself with more and you, you create opportunities by doing these mores with, with like-minded collaborations with, with who are better and smarter, probably equal in, uh, individuals or organizations like yours. And then how that's you scale up the business. Uh, you, it's very important for us to, to, to reinvent the wheel now because now it's not the time that we keep thinking that this Titanic is not going to sink. We, it's already gone down. We can't be in a notion of that this is not going to sing. This is as, a, as all of us on the same boat, on the same um, you know, ship, we all need to realize that we need to recalibre our efforts to uh, reinvent ourselves in the thought process. So uh, before COVID, we announced, uh, which was not officially announced, but a lot of people in the, in the fraternity know that we were doing uh, one of the biggest, most luxurious uh, social event at, in Maldives. Uh, which was of 100, 610 people buyout of almost three, one hundred percent buyout of Suneva Fushi as a property and two other adjoining resorts, and which got postponed and shifted to uh, March, and then again because of COVID has gone to the next level. So we are not we are going to do that wedding, that, that kind of event again in Maldives. In fact, in, in, in Sri Lanka, in Middle East, everywhere. That is not going to stop. We will make sure that we, we bring that business to Maldives. We will do that business in Colombo. We will do that in across wherever the client is, 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 uh, is looking for that great experience. But uh, we all need to have a plan B. We all need to un understand that there has to be a way to survive. And this is the golden time that we all need to realign ourselves. So I think the ideas are great, but execution is the key. So it only if, if you're able to put things together and it's not always about to speed to market now. It's all about uh, fit to market and demand and supply. So we have to understand what the demand is, how when the market really opens up, how are we going to respond to that? That is going to be the biggest challenge. So right now we're try, trying to do all you know, uh, testing periods, we're doing 50 packs, people wedding, um, some, you know, weddings uh, are, are getting cancelled because people are getting paranoid or few guests were uh, uh, found uh, positive. So everybody's gone down uh, uh, in quarantine after the wedding. So that's not a solution. Solution is to find something concrete to keep ourselves uh, evolved that while this will exist, it is not going to change. COVID is here to be with us all our, all our life because it's not something which you can't overlook. So we have to find alternative ways to, to keep our tourism going, our business going, whether it is weddings, corporate events, mice, or technology or education or, or se other sectors, we all need to find ways to keep going. And this is there for, this is the fact of life now. Thank you, Nilab. Now let me pass this back on to Suraj to see if he has anything to add. Suraj? Yeah, I mean, uh, it was uh, wonderful hearing all of you and, uh, you know, your thoughts on the industry, the current uh, and the present and the future. 
in fact yeah i uh, i think i have a minute probably i can throw a question at any one of you who is willing to take it and briefly like if you can put it through uh, we can uh, you know just squeeze in this bit uh, uh, bit of a uh, uh, discussion so i was always wondering like now with all this uh, situation that we are in and with all our plans it all comes down to something called you know costing like now the uh, clients are downsizing the budgets are downsized but then we are used to a certain level of pricing and certain level of way of doing things and in this quick time can we scale down to that level where it can be all profitable to like do what we would been doing so uh, anybody would like to take it so uh, you know just to going ahead and 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 telling uh, giving my perspective that as somebody is getting paid up there less and then that same is coming down to the root level so it's all about balancing the cost of production and reaching out to a point where it becomes a win win for everyone so everybody is repricing re restructuring their price models and offerings so if you if you were doing a of you know 2000 packs event earlier now we're doing a 50 packs so the scope of work and the scope of uh, you know indulgence and your and your efforts are accordingly proportionally designed so we all need to understand that now i don't think the luxury weddings uh, would probably happen at that scale of those lump, big numbers used to happen you know before covid i think that was all a stigma it was it was just like the people were following that trend and they were going to get out of it but uh, i think uh, the it, it, now the trend is going to be very very intimate more experiential more more customizable more in fact custom customizable and the price points have to be redesigned thank you neelam uh, amit do you want to quickly have your two cents on this and then we'll wind up the discussion yeah sure uh, so basically the uh, when we when you talk about uh, you know the virtual and and the um, the you know physical event uh, aspect also where the client spends money on uh, when you talk about virtual event the client has to actually you know uh, we have to justify whatever the spending is uh, on a virtual uh, space uh, space as well for the client uh, the money has to be worth and and you you know the client has to gain that confidence to actually you know invest into another virtual event or, or probably in the, the next one that you line up uh, soon um, so that, there's there's a thin line that we need to you know work on and and actually ensure that the client is happy at the end of it all and you know the delivery has to be apt also yeah uh, shani would you like to do the honors because i think uh, all our questions have been interesting and we had a wonderful everyone. discussion from all of you uh, thank you from my side over to you shani Yeah, thank you everyone for joining us for this episode 10 of the Sata Digital Travel Conversation. Thank you for watching and please stay safe. Thank you so much. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. Thank Pleasure you. interacting with all Bye. of you.